like this is what I really like about Reddit. This is the side of Reddit I like, and these are the types of rules and structures that really nurture good discussion. Yeah. That, so interestingly enough, the first place I saw this this thread was in the Monero subreddit when we were doing the Monero 101 episode. And that is, I gave like a huge shout out to the community because that was the first community I'd seen that in. And um, I'm fairly certain SGP was a moderator there. And that's why we even got to start this uh, this weekly thing. Like they, they kind of started way back then. So that huge appreciation that I love how it's got pro arguments, con arguments. Like you can click and see what you want and go over it because... In the end, it's okay to have an opinion as long as you go try to challenge that opinion and see what the other side is. Yeah. yeah that's, that's always it. been how we've tried to run this podcast as well. I mean, we want to see both sides. We, you know, we've talked about every single, you know, project that we've taken a deep dive on. Every single one has pros and cons and coins that I own also have cons. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. And but in the reason we've structured the podcast that way is because, you know, we really do subscribe to this idea that you have to come to terms with the reality that all of us have very deep rooted biases. We have blind spots. We have uh, emotions sometimes overtake our decision making. Right. So you can either ignore that or you can take on a mindset that puts it at the center which is skepticism, it's skepticism on yourself, asking why you like a project, trying to um, emphasize evidence over emotion or, opi you know, or opinion. So this framework is not just good for discussion. It's good for your everyday life. It's good for your investments. It's good for your interactions mm -hmm. with people. Uh, it's, it's something that we value on a personal level. So that's why it translates to the podcast. And I think that's why we appreciate something like this uh, being a part of our cryptocurrency. Yeah, I can't, I can't tell you how many times my opinion of a project has changed after either one of you guys did the research and presented it to me, or I did the research and presented it. I was like, wow, I had a good opinion of this project, now I don't, or I had a bad opinion of this project, and I kind of changed a little bit. Boy. So, definitely do that. Love these, uh, love these monthly skeptics threads. I was I was all over the one on the on the directed acyclic graphs. That one was pretty cool. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> all so right. Kareem, Kareem yeah. uh, you had kind of like wrote down some notes here on something that I thought was pretty cool, but I know a lesson that we always have to worry about is how how misleading is the title. So what what kind of happened with this Coke machine? Yeah. Uh, okay. Article? <laughs> so this is one of the top. <laughs> The top story. So for those of you that are listening to us for the first time, we always talk about how we just live in an age of headlines, right? The headlines are so misleading in crypto journalism, science journalism, political journalism. And this is a perfect example where I feel like it wasn't necessary and then it's detrimental to the original poster. So this is the this is the, the post right here. It says uh, Coke machine accepts Bitcoin through lightning and you open it up. And it's more of a homemade device with an open can, can of Coke bottle. One of the main comments um, points out that it's probably using uh, an Arduino chip, right? And what is that? It, it's like um, they're like, like raspberry, raspberry pies. Pie. Yeah, okay. we use them in the escape rooms all the time. They're like yeah, you could use it to like program. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. They use them in escape rooms to make tricks and stuff like that. But very simple computers. Yeah, yeah. simple computers gotcha. exactly. But here's the part that's sad, right? Like once that gets pointed out, uh, actually, I wanted to share this image with the community. I have it here. Once people find out that it's not like a Coke machine at a mall or something, but that it's something that somebody made, they feel deceived and disappointed. So they don't appreciate it anymore. They're like somebody in here is like, no, that defeats the whole purpose. This person's like wasting their time. Here's the, in my opinion, if this person had posted, Look at this proof of concept that we're working on. Look at this uh, prototype. Look what we were able to do. You, we were able to use the Lightning Network to get this machine to do a, whatever. A lot of people in the community are going to appreciate that. They're going to upvote that for what it is, the fact that you're adding value. But instead, it's like under the guise of adoption. So everybody upvotes because they don't look into it. And then people that look into it feel deceived. And it's like, why did you even take that line? 
Something that's very important to me and something that, you know, we harbor within this show, within our team is, is just honest living, honest expression. And sometimes that is a good thing amongst, you know, our, our coworkers. We, we tell each other when we're not, you know, happy with how things are going, but we also try to compliment each other when things are going well. You know, this is, you know, it, this could be simply fixed the way Kareem mentioned just by presenting it with more honesty, with presenting it for what it truly is, not what you want it to be. And that's what people are growing a lot of respect for when you present something the way that it truly is and then allow people to make that future vision for themselves. Yeah, and, but at the same time, is it going to get as many upvotes to get in front of as many people's eyes if it has a boring title? Right. Brent, that's your specialty, not mine. <laughs> no, but, yeah, but that is at the crux of the problem. It's the same thing with the headlines. How do, we, how do they get people to read the information if they can't grab their attention when they're competing for attention with all these other things that are going to use sensationalized headlines? So it, it's like a legitimate problem, which, by the way, if you guys have heard of a little thing called cryptocurrency, I'm sure there's projects working on that too. <laughs> uh, tokenizing trust and reputation. I cannot wait. <laughs> um. All right. So I, I still think it's did the Frogger returns really has the, uh... <laughs> I just saw it. Uh, oh, never mind. Yeah. It, it said, uh... what is going on? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, look, I'm still <laughs> coffee hasn't kicked in, but, now kids will have to convert their allowance to Bitcoin in order to have Coke. Therefore, driving up the price is oh, like yes. the goat comment. <laughs> yeah, I, th I can't believe it. Yeah, <laughs> that was in the exchange. That's hilarious. <laughs> Adoption. Making kids spend their allowance. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I would have... I don't know what I would have done if my allowance was given to me in in cryptocurrency. I got I got five dollars a week when I was a kid, and that meant that on Monday I was able to go buy like some stuff and then never able to do anything again. <laughs> hmm. Well, hold on a second. We got some breaking news. Yeah, here. I'm trying. I'm trying to get it here too. Whoa. I don't know what this is. H highly unusual here. We are interrupting with breaking news. Didn't our last breaking news have to do with Binance also? Yes, it's the same. It was the same thing. I don't oh, think. Okay. Uh, I don't. Okay, so yeah, is... remember. Well, all right, so so what we just had posted was the Binance dot uh, the the info dot Binance dot com rating list, right? And uh, that is basically coin market cap, but they pull in third party ratings from other sites that decide they're going to rate coins right so the first it looks like there was just a perfect 5.0 rating pulled in for xrp the blockchain solution for financial by institutions. coin bureau by I coin guess. bureau yeah so remember this is not by binance this is by whatever the rating agency is that's pulling it in so they gave it a perfect yeah, 10 like, out of binance 10 is one of the coins and i'm like <laughs> that's kind of weird if binance is like all it's right a, we but it's, it's a four a not a five it's kind of interesting yeah i know but like <laughs> I don't know. That would just be. I'm sure if you were. It's interesting. Yourself. Like, how do you re how do you submit a report on the Binance coin to Binance? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like doing a homework project on your English teacher. Like. <laughs> yeah. Right. I I uh, know that one of the things I saw about Ripple was that X Rapid was live, but I couldn't find a way to use it. So. Uh, so. No, it... But but Brent, it says right here that it's the blockchain solutions for financial institutions, not you. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> my, my bad. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, this this would this, this sounds like another Brett goes down coin market cap uh, YouTube video. In the <laughs> <Nike>. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, not actually a bad idea. I might have to. I, I might, might join to, you for that one. That we can have fun with that. <laughs> go down Binance info, uh, Binance <laughs> info ratings. Yeah. Binance rate list. Remember the other ratings too? We didn't cover this here on the our cryptocurrency, but on our flagship. You guys remember the ratings? I don't remember if they came out of China. But yeah, they were a Chinese like uh, the, uh government yeah, agency. Three, 
three out of the top five coins were all Dan Larimer coins. All yeah. of them. It, like, they were all rated the, the most everything. <laughs> best technology, best creativity. <laughs> yeah, the Weiss ratings were very bad, but there were some other ratings recently. The Weiss were ratings weren't as bad, but those Chinese ratings were like, what are you doing? They were yeah, so they... ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was insanity. All right, any Huzul, you guys want to move on to another part of the world? Oh, is Austria in the mix? Hey, Mike, how you know? How you know, man? Lucky yeah. guess. All right, so here is the post. This is adoption. This is an interesting topic. It basically is talking about how the Austrian government is going to issue a new set of bonds. Just a reminder, a bond is like basically like a loan that you're taking out with that government. They have long periods of expiration. That's going to be outstanding debt for a long period of time. And they've chosen to use the Ethereum blockchain to authenticate those sales. So that doesn't mean that um, they're going to sell in Ethereum or that they're going to be marked like in the actual currency of Ethereum. It's just that the Ethereum blockchain is going to be used in order to preserve that information and make it immutable and accessible and all the benefits that we know uh, that brings. So oh, can I can I interrupt you real quick here? I, I just have a quick question. <clears throat> so is is the idea? And I guess we haven't really gone into this, but I know that you and I have already talked about this. So I, I want my question is 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 this basically like people are going to be given a a block ID for when their bond was issued, and then that person would be able to go to the blockchain itself and like verify that their bond has been posted in this fashion and that it's going to be honored by the government. Is that kind of the idea behind it? Yeah. And I think I could be misinterpreting this, but I think that essentially here, the Ethereum blockchain is going to step in and fill in the role of some of the financial middlemen that will normally have to either issue. Oh, they're going to they're actually gonna use the sale smart... of that bond. <clears throat> they're going to, exactly. they're going to use some smart contracts. Perhaps I, perhaps I, my understanding is that it was going to involve the hash. Um, but, I'm not 100 percent sure to be yeah, honest, yeah, yeah. so I, so I don't want to say it. But I know mm -hmm. that again, it's just about recording the transaction. It's just about you know being able to prove, being able to issue, mm -hmm. not about you know the Ethereum currency itself, which of course is what some members of the uh, community were focused on because you know we everybody does care about price. Mm -hmm. So somebody on here is like, great, now maybe the Ethereum uh, Ethereum will start to recover from this uh, ridiculous dip. <clears throat> and then the next person, sorry, how will this rise the price of Ethereum? But, <laughs> serious question. Now, here's, I just want to point out two things that make me sad about this comment. <laughs> like, because on the one hand is, the, the, the automatic question is, how is this going to help the price? And it's like, it's not. It's showing that it's being used for other things. It, it makes it establish it, it diminishes risk. It makes it uh, more widely used, right? And the second thing is, he says no FUD. Like, it's implicit in his statement. Like, he, it's almost like they fear that even suggesting that it might not rise the price is attacking the project. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's how, like, it, that's not the way to think about it. <laughs> dumb. I don't want no fun. Fun is a dead. I can't get no. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good drop. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah. Anytime we say something bad about. Anything in the crypto space, you just have to play. I don't want no foot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I get I get what you're saying with that. That is like it no FUD, serious question, how this raise the price. Like the fa the fact that every little thing is supposed to affect the price is like such a bad uh such a bad mindset and we, we well, do need that's to get just back what that. people care about, right? Like people people use their emotions to show where they want you know things with the direction that they want things to head there are quite a few spectators that are still participating in this community that truly do all only care about price and that's fine like um, you can't weed all those people out but what we try to do is try to educate as many as we can so you know this guy board guy uh, board guy in dc you know i get that you know he cares about himself he cares about his family he cares about his you know financial situation and that's why he's here but hopefully we can start converting these people over time to see how much greater po like potential this situation has to the entire world. Right. Well, and, and, and just to be clear, you know, like I don't want to sit here and pretend like 
to, for example, me personally, that crypto has nothing to do with price. Of course, as an investor, I consider this to be a unique opportunity. That's why a lot of us got in this space. I do want it to do very well. But you can care about price without making it the sole lens through which you view the entire space, right? And, and I feel like some stories should definitely excite you because they might signify that your investment is going to do much better in the future. But it's, uh, it is so extreme how some people can only view every single news story through that lens, every conversation, everything is exclusively about what coin market cap is going to show tomorrow or in a month or in six months. Right. All right, guys. Speaking of price, Brent, I'm very excited to to discuss uh, the new listing policy on Coinbase today that was posted. This is nice. something that we've discussed oh. quite a bit on the show. Did they? But now, did they change it? Did they signal they that did. they're going to add? Uh, oh boy, we said this before you even get into this last week. Yeah. We said they're definitely never adding Ripple XRP until they signal it. By making a change in policy, I mean I haven't read this, so I'm excited. Is this it? Uh, yeah, buddy, it's it's coming. Oh boy! Well, I don't know if Ripple's coming, but the it's changed. Oh wait, wrong thing. Oh, oh stupid! Well, oh no! Did you post like... porn? <laughs> no, no, no. That was no. Bad. Oh. <laughs> yeah, crypto porn ratings. <laughs> Ratings list our crypto. Oh, yeah. On, Spread it. <laughs> Get out of here. The Automod's coming in. Automated. Crypto basic. Michael, you need to Craig, relax. Okay? Craig, I need help. Take a deep breath, Michael. Take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us the story. <laughs> so Coinbase has basically changed its tune on how it's going to list tokens on its platform. Basically, they said if you've met certain jurisdictions uh like if you if you meet the security in the other types of laws in compliance with the the local laws then they are very open-minded to adding you they're going to add coins with no application they're going to have no application fee have no application fee so any project that has a digital asset is welcome to apply and and they basically have said that it's it's going to rapidly just expand. It's probably going to look a lot more like Binance with you know tons of coins listed pretty soon as opposed to five. And you know one of the things that we've always had issues well not really issues but one of the complicated parts of Coinbase for the U.S. market is that if if they have considered adding a product to their exchange, then that product would go through a lot of um, fluctuation in price, either good or bad, or or sometimes a rumor would drive it up and then bring it back down. And, and basically that they're only going to announce the addition of the new assets at or near the time of public launch. So this is kind of important. Like with, I believe with Ethereum Classic, they had they decided to give a little notice. They said, hey, we're gonna list this in a little while. We're gonna list this in a few weeks, I believe. And it's kind of something we've all discussed. We've weighed the pros and cons on this subject. What is the right way for Coinbase to list new new coins? I don't know the right answer. I think this is probably what they've decided. And, you know, on, on top of everything else, they can, at their discretion, just choose to add a good pro quality project that they feel like adding. So lots of changes. Uh, we, we were harping on Ripple for a long time as not being an option under Coinbase's rules. But now that those Coinbase rules have changed, I think that there's a lot of crypto projects that are going to get added here, probably even by the end of the year. So, yeah. Mike, I will say I pulled up their mission and values uh, from that link. 1.1 uh, open financial system. The fourth section is decentralization. So they still have listed decentralization as a primary factor, um, which would. Yeah, which would disqualify Ripple at the moment. Now, now again, there's there's different arguments as to what is decentralized, what isn't. When we talk about right. like Bitcoin, one of the points that Mike made was that ultimately they reserve the discretion to move forward with a quality project if they believe that it's beneficial. Right, Mike? Is that what I? Understand? That's what I believed it to be. Right. I mean, look, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm going through that list of the types of things that Coinbase is asking for, like innovation like you said brent uh decentralization equality of opportunity and they go through each one and they they have requirements for the team for how the sale goes for market and supply has to have a white paper really interesting 
Has so. to have a white paper? <laughs> or it, yeah, it's got uh, 2.3 has white papers, so that'll take out, uh, you know, the, the projects without them. Like, we just did LISC 101 release yesterday. They didn't have a white paper. And I was like, and they're like, yeah, we should probably get around to that someday. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, I mean, maybe. Maybe they shouldn't bother. Anyway, listen. It's going to be cool because I think so far Coinbase has done a pretty good job. I mean, I'm not trying to push a particular project. We also think finance has done a good job um, with a lot of things. Anyway, bottom line is they've been pretty good with due diligence. They've been pretty good with what projects they select. And um, I'm okay with them expanding that framework as long as they keep the quality that they've shown before. So we'll see. This is going to be good. You know, uh, weed out some of the some of the chaff maybe maybe our next contest should be like coins we should like do a draft of coins that we think are going to get added to coinbase in (laughs) by the way uh this is this is also cool like you know i'm usually pro uh regulation when it comes to some things but this is an example i think of a way in which the market could self-regulate you know if like binance and coinbase and bitrock whatever if the major uh exchanges really like make an effort to like weed out good projects that can make them more accessible to the public like you don't need as much intervention to protect consumers you know yes well as long as they do a good job at um correct weeding at at weeding out like i would say binance probably does a pretty good job they've listed a couple of like shitty coins but um any of these ones that charge a massive fee i guess they're just like yeah if you can pay the fee you're on but if the fee is passing our sniff test of you being a, a legitimate project, that's a different story. Which is what's going on here. Nobody has to pay to apply, so it's just a matter of them looking at you and saying, you're not a scam, so we'll we'll put you on. We like you. Yeah. Yeah, there is something perverse about the monetary incentive. Uh, you know, I, it makes sense in some ways, but like you said, like shouldn't just be about who can give them money. Coinbase is is incentivized to list projects that have an upward trajectory more than a downward trajectory. Yeah, but uh, you know, scams can have an upward trajectory. Yeah, right. Bit- no, BitConnect sure. is in I the mean, top twenty of the market cap at one point. Uh, but that never one second passed our sniff test. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So it it you know hopefully it doesn't pass. Hopefully, I would trust Coinbase to be a little more diligent than we would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where it gets complicated, right? That's where we get to the incentives. Because, right. <laughs> like, if if all these companies... I mean, there does come a point where it's like, you could not do the right thing, but it's going to make you a lot more money. That's a tough decision for a lot of... Especially once the corporate structure is more cemented and you have, like, shareholders or board of directors or whatever that are really pushing for maximized profit. Yeah, we could have we we could be uh, shilling a lot of like really shitty projects for for a decent amount of money if we uh, if we didn't bother to do a sniff test on them. <laughs> all right, all well, right. it's uh, that was awkward silence, but that's all right. We'll go to the next. <laughs> uh, what do you? Oh, uh, okay. Got a little. Uh... Got a little crypto art for you guys here. <laughs> it's not going to be a lot of in-depth discussion. Just Actually, it's just more of one particular comment that uh, was in here. <laughs> <laughs> the plumbus H, the picture at the bottom of somebody was the plumbus H. I guess I should introduce the whole piece of art, right? It's Somebody's like, oh, crypto will be here sooner or later. It's not happening as fast as you like, but it's happening. And it's like the Middle Ages, the present, and... The bottom is all like futuristic, and I guess they're saying eventually people will use crypto, which I hope it doesn't take until we're in <laughs> the stars or whatever. But I love the comment, the plumbus age. <laughs> yeah, the, I, those do look like plumbuses. I, I'm gonna right? have to agree. What with is you. a plumbus? Rick and Morty, Mike. That's how you make a plumbus. It's that pink thing. Remember, <laughs> like there's a whole video about how they make them. Oh. <laughs> yeah kind of silly yeah uh we we actually had a really cool crypto artist on the show at one point um uh vesa 
Kinnevin. I don't want to pronounce that last name wrong. Yeah. Kinnevin. I knew it was like there's V's and K's and and yeah they they did some they did some pretty cool uh they did some pretty cool artwork where they kind of incorporate different crypto logos and and stuff like that. So it's not as uh, plumbusy as as you might be looking for with this little crypto art piece, but it's definitely uh, definitely cool artwork. To yeah, no, it was really. I'm actually gonna go find the link. I think it was Art for Crypto or something, right? Yeah, Art yeah. for Crypto. While you're uh, yeah. while you're checking that out, um, I want to mention that uh, even though X Rapid is going, and I'm sure that's great. Stellar opened their uh, no fee exchange, um, which was pretty interesting. Like they they had always been talking about a zero fee decentralized exchange, kind of. Even though the way we kind of explained Stellar, it's not really decentralized. When you're talking about linking other coins to it, you still have to trust that the the people uh, that are creating the bridges to the network are doing yeah, it the to, right way. You had to open a lot of trust channels with people. Right. So, but there is now a completely functional decentralized exchange but with different uh, projects on different networks. So you can actually trade among those networks in their decentralized exchange that way, which is pretty cool. Uh, it says it's completely fee-less. That means that they're refunding all of the Stellar network fees. Uh, you're still going to have to pay fees to get stuff on there. Like I went to deposit. I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll put $50 on here to like check it out, see how it works so I can report to the community and uh, the minimum deposit via their like US dollar onboarding was a thousand dollars and it was a $25 flat fee. So I was like, well, that's not, not exactly zero fees, but I'm sure that'll go down as more people uh, open up trust networks with fiat exchanges or with fiat onboarding, but still cool. I mean, uh, Stellar works very quickly. So even if it just replaces Ether Delta in that little niche there, it's going to be good. Um, it's going to be good for the community. <laughs> ah, stellar, stellar rocket ship. Let me see. Oh, I didn't post it. Never mind. All right, hold on. I, was... I am Satoshi Komodo. Nakamoto, homeboy. You never uh... heard of Satoshi Nakamoto? <laughs> <laughs> one one day we'll we'll talk about who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Mike, Mike, ba Craig. you might know him as Craig, right? Yeah, there you go. No, 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 Craig, the vo the bot, the chat. <laughs> oh, that's right. That that Craig is much better than Craig, right? All right, so I'm not trying to spare anything, but this is just an example of like the artists we had on the show, some of the crypto art that he makes, uh, kind of like this kind of trippy surreal, and this painting is called Satoshi Nakamoto. Pretty cool. Not trying to spam or anything, but but here's some spam. No, nah, I'm just no. Nah, it, it was art? a it was a cool interview. It was really worthwhile. I like Are there any questions from the community? Is there anybody, anybody got anything on their mind? Anything that you want to talk about crypto related? Any topics of conversation? Supposed to, come on, community. Is there anything personal you want to ask us? <laughs> no, wait, hold on a second. Bob is typing. Whoa, three people are typing. Yes. Several people are typing. That's my favorite. Community for the win. <laughs> wait, what? ADA came out with a crypto card. Did I miss that? I saw that they came out with that web wallet, uh, yeah, Eurobi that. or something. It started with a Y. I don't remember. What it sounded like it had a much better name than fucking Daedalus, uh, or not? Not Daedalus. Uh, not Daedalus. Sorry. Uh, uh, fucking Daedalus. Icarus. Icarus. Yeah. Oh, Icarus. You're talking about Icarus. Icarus. Yeah. I don't they... think it's that bad. Just don't get too close to this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't. But wait. You know what? Actually, a lot of people don't know that the what other. What is that story. picture? Oh my God, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love it. That that yeah, picture is certainly amazing. I don't know if uh, if that if... <laughs> <laughs> I thought he left Twitter. What happened here? Yeah, I told you. Oh, you would have won the shit out of that bet if you had bet me. I was like, he's not gonna leave Twitter. He's just mad, bro. Dude, yeah, that was that was the easiest uh, side of career of all time. By the way. He was, he was definitely coming back. All right, so we got no details about the card other than it looks like uh, Charles is on a background. That looks like the background for um, for Robinhood's crypto trading. So he is uh, 
you know, maybe maybe ADA is going to get listed on Robinhood shortly or something. You gotta gotta read into this kind of stuff, or he just looks ridiculous and whatever. It's fun. <laughs> is that Snapchat? Uh, no, it's not. It looks like somebody photoshopped that. That is not a snap filter, as far as I can tell. I wonder, is it a Facebook filter? Maybe. Uh, no, I think he just yeah. green screened that shit. All right, all right. <laughs> I I like. I, I don't know what happened, but Automod said nice ass zero nine six one with kicked. <laughs> Bob like kicked Bob somebody. Bob framed someone. <laughs> This auto mod is on fire, telling Mike to relax when he was over posting stuff. Yep, I was getting a little out of line. Yeah, uh, so yeah, we should buy some more Cardano apparently because we got this uh, glittery and Hoskins and he. Oh wait, that is a okay. So wait, you have money. Wait, 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 wait. Top comment. Well, how will this no price the price? <laughs> <laughs> but I can trade crypto into more ADA. Look, we can always sweep Binance fees into more Binance coin. But I, I think I have like, like a, a, bunch, you... a full Tron at this point. Yeah, how many Tron tokens have, has somebody fed you? <laughs> I don't know. I, I that's know like I have my somebody. Favorite thing on, that's like my favorite thing that we've talked about since this whole like crypto thing started. It's like the fact that you're so anti-Tron, but one of your Binance referrals just keeps like They're giving you little trading Tron nonstop. Like absolute crazy. Like they're always It's, it's like a joke it. that I couldn't have even come up with myself. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know who but that the is. The secret is that it's actually Brent, like trading all this trying. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, I. It's uh, on his dad's account. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this coin. <laughs> bye bye bye. Yeah yeah bye bye. <laughs> He's been scooping up trying. You're, you're doing fun. the whale suppression tactics. Yeah, I've just been fun fun it. Just... <laughs> when they made the Pornhub announcement, and, and KuCoin too, already, right? Like, all in. Yeah, Ku yeah, you know, I've been accumulating all kinds of KuCoin stuff. <laughs> they have been really shilling hard on Reddit. I've been noticing a lot of like, what is KuCoin videos and stuff like that. So, interesting. Interesting to note. Sounds like standard marketing. No, yeah, it, it's not though. It's like, like it's that peep. It's that marketing where people are like pretending to post, like they are not part of the team and they are, and then it gets a couple of fake comments really quickly, which I guess is marketing. But whatever. Like it's just a. The shady style, like, you know, let's go viral. Walton Chain. <laughs> yeah, we had a fun Everyone episode on that, Walton Chain. They did that Twitter thing, right, where they they faked the winner. Yeah, yeah, they were like, oh, we got a winner. No, 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 they didn't fake a winner. They gave oh, no, it to the, the, themselves. <laughs> yeah. won it. Yeah. They're the, like, I won, yay. The winner was an employee of their team. Yep. Yeah, like. The guy who ran the other Twitter account, he just forgot to log out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. What a joke. Yeah, that's pretty bad, guys. Yep, I don't know if they've recovered. If they've ever recovered from that. <laughs> I'm sure they have. <laughs> I'm try sorry, I'm trying to... I, I wanted to give you guys an answer, but logging into Binance is like... Uh, you know, the mo <laughs> monster keeps eating my seven image. codes. You got to verify an email. No, they don't even say monster eats the image anymore. They changed it to something else. But like yeah, mostly you, if I don't get in the top 99 percentile, I just reload the page and try again. So <laughs> it's really important to me to have great metrics for my uh, Binance logins. You want Binance to think you're a bot? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Come on, Binance. I wanted. I want to say how many Tron I have, but I, I haven't been able to get in there yet. Oh my god, that's the answer you're trying to find out. Yeah, I need to know how many Tron I have in my Binance account right now. This is from referrals from somebody who you don't know who it is. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm sure I knew who they were at some point, but they, none of my friends have admitted to being the one that is going nuts trading Tron. So. Oh, side note, I don't know if you guys saw one of the other posts was the, uh, uh, remember that there was like a lawsuit against the Nana Foundation? Apparently got thrown out. Oh, yeah, were they, yeah, they were trying to say they had something to do with, uh, with whatever, the bomber's uh, scam. Yeah, the Big Grail thing, I think. Yeah, that was bomber, that was, that was that guy's name. Yeah, uh, I got the post right here. Yeah, you're the one that know like... You, I know you followed that story pretty closely. Did you know how, like, did it get resolved in any way? Or? No, I, 
I wasn't following the lawsuit because it seemed really stupid to me, but I, I think that they were alleging that somehow the Nano Foundation had something to do with not, I don't know, like, it was their fault that somebody stole money from the community. I'm not sure, like, how to quantify that, but I, it, it always sounded oh, they really the stupid. Foundation? Yeah, th yeah, it's, Nano has... I mean, that just sounds like somebody that doesn't really understand what happened in their own <laughs> case. Yeah, or, or they're trying to put pressure on the foundation to, like, pay people the, the coins back. Okay, well, that creates a larger question, then. L what <clears throat> type of legal responsibilities do you think these foundations have for their own coins? Well, they definitely don't have the responsibility to pay for uh, somebody stealing their coin from an exchange. The exchange owner being uh you know ripping people off obviously i agree with that but what like where where do you draw the lines on different topics uh that's tough to say because uh, it depends on how involved some of these foundations are and, and and what do you mean by responsibility you know like uh if there's a flaw in the code uh, maybe that becomes a little bit more um can fall on the shoulders of the foundation if the foundation is funding the development team or they're awarding the contract for the development team uh i don't know i think i feel like that's difficult to say but it's also difficult to come up with scenarios i can't think of theft scenarios where the foundation is responsible right like either if the blockchain is well built then any like exchange theft or uh, you know wallet hack or usually that stuff is mostly more related to like third parties or things like that if it's a code exploitation then um, i guess it depends on the relationship with the development team yeah but if somebody just runs an exchange and steals all the money then i think uh yeah. nano is not responsible <clears throat> I, I would venture to agree with brent on this one yeah that uh that i don't think that i want really to be clear that's though. my stance as well i'm just trying to lead the conversation here for a yeah, little yeah. bit so i have 2.9 TRX tokens, I am ashamed to say, 2.9. So if you had the under on three, you're the winner. So how many new Binance coins are you about to have? Uh, I don't know. Okay. We'll... Can we stop shilling Brent's personal net worth? Come on. <laughs> He's I'm over here bragging it. about having three Tron and stuff. Yeah, so. Brent, get your shit together. Really... <laughs> when moon on Tron, y'all. No, actually, whoever that person is has been trading in and out of Zen. I hope they keep that up. Because <laughs> that's uh, somebody must have started listening to the episodes. Yeah. You know, it was actually when uh when I saw the our cryptocurrency skeptic monthly thing, one of my thoughts was like, oh man, I can't believe you know um Horizon's not in there. But then I was also thinking because you know we we have a re relationship to uh Horizon, not like where we became interested in the project. We've interviewed the owner. We like the development team, right? But then I also thought about like how we always talk, there's bubbles, right? We happen to be in the kind of like IOHK little bubble. So we have a lot of appreciation for ETC and this other projects, but there's so many other like valid bubbles and, you know, looking at all the other coins that we're listing, Monero or looking at something like uh, Zcash, you know, these, these are like, um, it's like difficult to even decide what, how, what should be listed and what shouldn't be listed, you know? My guess is they just grabbed like Zcash as the um, as the representation of. Well, Pivx was there. Yeah, was but they there? weren't they weren't zero knowledge proofs. Pivx does. Oh, they were what... a dash fork though, right? Yeah, although they put yeah. Dash and Pivx, so I don't know. They I don't know why Pivx. And Pivx, in right? Exactly. But again, I'm not, <clears> it's not. I'm not criticizing the decision not to include Horizon. I'm actually pointing out that sometimes we look at these lists and because something that we think should be there isn't on there it just kind of feels like it's not valid but there's really a lot of different little perceptual bubbles and you may be very familiar with one project that a lot of other people aren't familiar with but they're very familiar with a project that you don't understand as much you know like uh the truth is i'm not that familiar with stellar but from what are, everything i hear you know stellar has a lot of value for example so it's you know again keep our own biases in check when we even look at a list like that because i could see on the discussion that a lot of people were disappointed that some coins were included or excluded yeah well like i said the zcash is the coin that started all of those other forks so you know it's it's not that weird that zen using uh zero knowledge proof wasn't included and zcash was um there i there's probably not enough of a difference between pivx and and dash but but at the 
you know, we we looked at Pivix and uh, we kind of liked them at the time. It, a little bit, you know, things have changed a little bit with the project. I'm not sure that I would include them in a portfolio now, but they're, uh, you know, they're they're definitely worthy of being a privacy coin, and their P is in the name. And remember, Zen is like way down on the. Uh... Well, actually, that's one of the things that I noticed that it was that I, that it was because that was my first. Thought. I was like, oh well. I know they're much smaller. So oh, SGP you said Pivx file. represented the zero coin implementations. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. See, there you go. You're getting the explanations right here, right now. All right, a couple things. Um, SGP did say they, they actually took some time to decide which coins to include in this. So obviously they thought about that. And uh, and, and our buddy Cashman wants to know what our roadmap looks like. Oh, I don't our, have a good answer. Um, well, our roadmap. I, and to be clear, I assumed that they thought about it for a while. I was playing on it. To be clear, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, this wasn't like a like rolling a D and D character. Like, oh, we got two strengths. I guess we're gonna go with it. <laughs> oh man, showing exposing the nerdiness. Yep. Yes. Cream, did you ever play that? Uh, I've played that tabletop game dice before. games. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, many of those. Sweet. I, but I think he was specific referencing Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I played that once or twice. That's sweet. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what, what do we got coming up in the future? What What are we looking at? What's, um, what's gonna be fun for the Crypto Basic Podcast? Well, do you want to hear something like hilariously sad? So there's this kick-ass conference, crypto conference that's coming to South Florida. Brent's been busting his ass to try to get us uh, press passes, but he didn't tell us that he was doing this. And unbeknownst to us, he got the tickets for all three of us to go to the crypto conference on, on the exact day. Mike has to go to Tennessee. I have to go to California. So uh, <laughs> one of the exciting things was that we forever alone. <laughs> oh, I, I actually just canceled my trip like yesterday. Oh, Whoa. oh, shit. Breaking, news. breaking news. Cashman right here on the crypto basic upcoming upcoming roadmap for the crypto basic podcast. i'm also not sure how good that crypto conference is it was really expensive to get into but uh i was like looking for speakers and they had like the mayor of miami and like oh, the shit. mayor of coral gables but like not they didn't have anybody like charles or something so we'll see yeah well the mayor of miami is the on that, Miami's bro? big city bro uh the 11th and 12th of october any any requests any ideas what we well that's a thursday friday, friday? Mike interview people yeah, yeah it's, it's like thursday, thursday friday sweet ship it nice so there you go so that's that's awesome. a possibility on the roadmap <laughs> cash is like so there's still one ticket available eh? <laughs> I, I i got charlie to agree to go with me because like he's a great person to have at a networking event so i don't uh... mind going with charlie by the way don't, don't read into that too much <laughs> Uh, uh Char Charlie's our Charlie's one of our friends that we like to uh like when I do this voice, oh hey guys, what 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 do you know? What's going on here? <laughs> That's referred to as my Charlie voice, but uh, even it's though he used it to imitate <clears throat> anybody. Yeah, in it's the literally world. like, like it's just Brett's like, like That's how he would imitate voice. That's how he would imitate Fat Albert. He would be like, Hey guys, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like that's he does that voice for everything. <laughs> So that, anyway, that's the only thing that I would see point. is on our roadmap. At, at some point, like when we wrote out our like actual individual roadmap, we put making money on there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's being pushed off longer and longer as this as the market tanks. But what we will say is that <laughs> when we originally got this together, I, I felt like we thought 2018 was a, like very uncertain, and you know that's fine so far. I don't, I don't mind what it's been. I don't mind where it's going. Yeah, well, here's a little insight. Um, turns out that people's interest in cryptocurrency-related content, such as articles, videos, podcasts, uh, is consistent or correlated with the performance of cryptocurrency. So yeah. whenever you see, like, cryptocurrencies down 40%, uh, yeah, same so thing. So our listeners. <laughs> yeah, so is engagement. <laughs> like, that's basically how it works. But yeah. Um, when we had like, that one like uh, bull week there for a little bit, we got all we got tons more listeners yeah, just that one like, week. <laughs> really? Funny yes. How, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
But anyway, uh, any other any other cool thoughts or stories or rants, guys? We do have nine more minutes with the good people. Mm, rants. I. You know what? I hadn't. Uh... You know what, Brent? Why don't you tell me a little more about that uh, that conference? So we, there's a couple random speakers. It's it's a Thursday, Friday. It's in Miami. Um, is there a schedule? Is there? Are we going to have press passes? Are we walking around yeah. interviewing people? What, what do you want to do? I don't know. Devo just pointed out, if anybody's interested, we can unmute mics. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely unmute. We're always down. If anybody wants to jump in or ask a question or have an opinion. Yeah, just, uh, uh, I guess, like, <laughs> raise your hand. Raise. Hi, Cream Sister. No, stop oh, it. <laughs> we were already done talking about Stellar. Please. Please stop. <laughs> Check baits. I love hate you guys. I don't even remember her name. Good. This, good. Oh wow. I I do. I'm not gonna say it, but I trust me, Kareem sister. I know I know your name. I have nothing but nice things to say about her. Everyone is Mike Shy. Yeah, we found out in the past. We made that offer before. Uh, yeah, we always kind of envision people popping on here and and discussion with us, discussing with us, but uh, but you know, in the same end, same reason uh, why Brett made us a phone number. Yeah, nobody has ever called that phone number, as far as I know. Yeah. But we have yeah, one. But to be fair, though, I remember like it's one of those things that that Brent did that at the end of the day, I'm like, well, I, hey, that's pretty, that's a good idea. But I remember thinking like, bro, a a Google number. Nobody gonna call this like. <laughs> I I just like it was one of those things that's like I'm sure there's some value in this, but I would just rather use my time doing anything else. <laughs> yeah, I in, to be fair, I've never checked it. Maybe we did get calls. <clears throat> oh my god, there's like there's like we have like 18 minutes. voicemails. Please, I want to give your podcast money, please. <laughs> it's so like Come old on. Wall. It's like old Wall Street guys that like don't know how to use the internet. Yeah. yeah. Hey, kid, I heard your podcast. Sounds real good. I want to invest in you, see? Give me a call back. <laughs> My buddy's telling me I need to buy a Tron. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else? Any feedback, Mike, saying his questions? Com oh, I think Brent was going to finish talking about that conference. Was I? No, I don't know. Mike no, no, I've, I've the, uh, you asked like what we were doing there. I don't know. M mostly networking on in the area. I have no idea if it'll be even worthwhile. Like I said, there, it doesn't appear that there's any particularly great. Uh, you know, I don't want to say this, and then I uh, we we may interview the CEO of the conference as like a as a, a um a primer for us to go. I don't, I'm waiting to hear back from them. So uh, that's you know we'll 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 know more then. We'll know more then. Uh, actually, I just got an email from. Uh, they need our numbers for. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> got the media. Sounds like you guys are going to a crypto conference. Good, good thing we had this discussion on air, so I could have came. Ooh, delisting coins. All right, so so Spiff, what specific <laughs> coins uh, have come up that triggered that question? Like, so you're so you're saying like, uh, Binance should He's be getting rid like, of like shitty coins. No, no, no. <clears throat> He's saying like Hunger Games, mother. He's saying like Hunger Games. You pick all the coins, make them battle it out, and only three coins survive, and then they have to get uh, relisted. And that's how you keep the top coins on the top. That's what you're saying, right, Spiff? <laughs> no, maybe he's just saying that they should delete some coins. Um, Re there Ooh. should be a coin Hunger Games at some point. Real world use coins. <clears throat> we can have them compete in like the coin Olympics. Like we can send a transaction and see like how quickly it gets to the next wallet. And that can be like one of the races in the coin triathlon. Yeah. We can have team member A on one side pressing send and team member B on the other side hitting <laughs> refresh and we can record it. You could have hackathons. You, yeah. could, you could try to have teams trying to like spam the network and try to blow it up. We can have You're Brent do that. Brent. We get a Brent to the ice cream uh, tasting trick. You do some social engineering hacking and see how many ice cream flavors he can get before he gets cut off. Ah, oh, yeah, the ice cream tasting. Uh, have them pay for coffee. That's definitely one of the events. 
Yes, there you go. You have <laughs> to go into a Starbucks does. in your lo- yeah. local area until you can get somebody the, to the, buy you a cup of coffee for crypto. The, the, the barista, <laughs> the transaction has to go through before the barista finishes your coffee. That's the... That's the benchmark. <laughs> you, you have to you have to get somebody to give you five dollars or whatever, so you can so you can pay. Oh my god! One time as a punishment for a bet we made, we said that during the recording of an episode, Mike had to go and get like free crypto from one of the. Crypto no Verge. We made him go yeah, to Verge. I, I know. I wasn't. Get, I didn't want to. Whatever. Yeah. We. We're like, yeah, <laughs> we get free Verge, and then like literally. I, it took him like eight seconds. He like hopped in there and he's like, so how do I get some free Verge? And then like somebody sent them like three Verge. And I was like, oh, that just happened. It was way, it was way craftier than that. Don't sell me shit. I went in there. I was sweet. And I was asking about the project and I was like, man, like what do I got to do to get tips some Verge? And some guy just tipped me. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> he's still holding. <laughs> yeah. I think I it like might've been my- five Verge. I, I don't know. I remember like once it happened, we were like, damn, we should have made that a lot higher. <laughs> Yeah, or no, it might have been I one. I wanted to do a different punishment. <laughs> you still holding, Mike? What's all right? So here's the thing. I don't know what kind of wallet it get, it tips you on on Discord. I have no idea if I actually got any Verge. I just went in there. I it, as soon as they sent it to me and I got that screenshot, I basically just left the Discord. So we expected so, it to be like a a fun thing that took the whole episode, where Mike would be like chiming in and giving us some updates. Like, oop, oop, they're talking to me now. But instead, he was like, all right, I'm in the Discord. That is what happened. We got about, like, five minutes into random updates and, like, the fourth update. Oh, was we got ten, we got 11 minutes because they wouldn't let you talk for the first 10. So, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, you couldn't even talk. Yeah, so it literally took you two minutes. It was insanity. And God, to answer your God. question, that's it. that verge is floating in, in the crypto space somewhere. Who, it's We're still holding. <laughs> still hodling. One day, Discord, you'll get a notification from Discord. Excuse me, sir. Eight years ago, you got tipped Verge. As you, know. As you know from the little commercial with Pornhub, they're everywhere now. And you guys remember that with the old man? Oh, yeah. We're, uh, yeah. He's like, so, we used to have to pay for porn with our real money. Uh, all right. We got 30 seconds left, basically, or something like that. You guys, Spiff, I'm not familiar any with uh, anything in New Zealand. For not disclosing password. F- for for not disclosing the password to your phone? <laughs> that sounds invasive. Yeah. Good luck with that. I guess I'm not going to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, no, take that off I'm, the list. I wanna I need to see some sources, man. I don't even put uh put fingerprint or facial recognition on my phone so that people don't have the right to get in there or the pseudo right, like Supreme Court stuff. Hmm. <laughs> Boy. All I, right. I think that our border patrol is allowed to, or our border is allowed to ask you to open your shit too, but they, they can't ask you to uh, provide your password. I, I don't know. Um, here's a here's a little spoiler though, Spiff. We are the worst people to endorse a travel ban because we love traveling. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, Kareem, no, have no. they ever made you unlock your phone or your laptop? Oh, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Uh, There's no, one of us I, with more experience being taken to secondary than the others, so I'm just. Well, there's one. Brent's you know, probably in the upper like fractions of a percent of people, but Cream is even further up than that. Well, all right, <laughs> let's see. Let's do. We have you guys don't know that much information about us personally. All you know is that our names Mike, Brent, and Kareem. <laughs> Which one of us gets stopped more by security? <laughs> <laughs> And if you saw a picture Definitely of Kareem with his full beard, uh, yeah, yeah, no. But, Kareem, how are you feeling about the beard? Is it staying? Kareem, uh, you want to tell the story about the cruise? Nope. <laughs> Maybe next week. It's twelve oh one. We have to say goodbye to the good people. We do. All right. Well, here's the here's the teaser. We tried to get on a cruise one time, and Kareem got detained. There's more to that story. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you guys next week. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you guys are the best. Thank you, guys. Been fun as always. Hopefully something a little more interesting will happen in the crypto markets next week. When moon. Moon city. Let's go, moon. When moon. Ask Elon. Oh, poor Elon. Oh. <laughs> poor guy. Yeah. 
All right. That's it. We out. All right. We out. Peace.